Welcome to the video. Yes, hi guys, welcome back to another video. I do finally have an office chair, so I can now sit down in the boiling hot garage. So a bit, little bit nicer to work in, but still very hot. So this video, just picking orders and a little update on what I found at the car boot. Quite a big haul, just from one car boot sale that I'm gonna show you guys. Anyway, let's get into the orders and go from there. So we've got 12 going out this weekend. Quite a busy weekend again. I've been sending out lots of offers, accepting offers. Uh, I even ran a sale on my shop just to get things gone really. Rearranging the shop a little bit, making some little changes. It has boosted sales quite dramatically. So anyway, as always, I'll start with the smallest orders and work my way up to the biggest. So first up, we have these Technics instructions. These just came with a little hi-fi setup. Um, I usually just split them out or I sell them with the hi-fi if I feel like it. Depends what sort of condition they're in. If they're beaten up, then just whack them with the hi-fi, sell them with that. Helps it sell, but they do sell separately. Only a little bit of money, £6.39 plus postage. But usually I pay about 40 quid, 50 quid for the whole hi-fi. Make a load of profit back on that, just on like the CD players and stuff. And just do all these little extras just add to the bank account at the end of the day. Next up, we have Tom and Jerry bumper special edition of a VHS tape. So this is a double, double box set. Believe it or not, people still want VHS tapes. They do take a while to sell, but eventually they go. I picked this up for free at a Jumble Trail, just with a load of other VHS players. So it owes me absolutely nothing. It's sold for $7.99 plus postage. And next up we have these Lego, well it's an instructions, and this is literally just an outer sleeve for a vintage box. So there you go. It's literally just the sleeve. This is sold for $14.99. Well I say $14.99, I did have a 10% offer on, so I think they paid about £12 something, plus postage. Again, doesn't owe me anything. I paid about £3 for a whole bundle of um, vintage Lego instructions. I got rid of them quite easily. They sold because they're very popular. People people obviously have the Lego but don't have the instructions, so they really want it. And I just separated these two because that's actually the instructions, I think, for that set. And <laughs> someone obviously has the box but no outer sleeve. And you know how collectors are. They'll probably stick it on a shelf somewhere. It's nice to have the full, complete box set. Next up, we have this cat mate a water fountain just for your cats and dogs just to drink water it's basically like a uh, self-refilling sort of water fountain it purifies the water as it processes through the whole system so you can kind of leave them all day and the water will still be nice and fresh as it goes through the system i actually have one over here i'll show you this is another one i picked up the other day so yeah water goes in the top filters all through here and then sits in the bottom bowl it's continually refreshing the water that is sold for 15 pound going gsp to america and uh, next up we have this Moodoo watch. I've already wrapped it in bubble wrap, but I'll show you some photos on the screen now of what it looks like. This one came from my granddad's loft. As you saw in a previous video, like I said, I've been, I've been picking a few little bits and bobs out of the loft and just getting rid of it. It's all really vintage, kind of 35, 40 years or older. This is probably around 40, 50 years old. Um, it's an automatic movement. I couldn't get it to work, but of course, as I said in my previous video, people usually take these apart and switch the movements, replace them, take what they need and put it in a new watch, get that one up and running. I've managed to sell this one for 20 quid. I think I had it up for 30 or 25. Someone sent me a 20 pound offer. So I straight away took that up. Doesn't owe me anything, free money. And next up we have these Black Sketches Dynamite. I think 2.0 is the model. Uh, these are brand new. I picked these up for five pound at the car boot. Always pick up Sketches in this sort of condition because they always sell well. Be careful of the foam soles because they are sort of foam, so just make sure they haven't disintegrated. These have sold for £25. I think I had them up for 30 Received an offer of 25 so straight away snap that up. And good to get them gone. I think they sat around for about a month, month and a half, so not that long. And next up is this Pampered Chef pizza base. All this sort of stone baking pizza is quite in at the moment. Uh, yeah, everyone's got those sort of ovens in their garden now. Basically, I'll show you this one. All it is is a stone plate. Quite large, probably about 30 centimetres around. I paid £3 for this at the car boot. It looks unused. It's not got any burn marks on it or anything like that or any stains or whatever. And that has sold for £30. I had it up for, I think, 40 or something like that. Someone sent me an offer of £30. I straight away took that just because I paid £3 for it and I'm not going to complain at £3 into £30. Uh, do look out for Pampered Chef stuff. I've said it before in my previous video. Some of it's worth picking up. Some of it isn't. It sticks around for a while. I think I've got a cookie press in one of these boxes that's been sat around for about five or six months. And next up we have these Dewalt Pro Light work boots, still toe capped, really nice clean condition. A little bit, a few little scuffs on it and stuff. Obviously they've been previ previously used and if they were used by like a bricklayer or something, they're gonna have a few markings on them. But overall the damage is actually really good. They've probably only been worn for about a month or so when they were actually used. Someone's paid 30 pound for these ones. 
I paid six pound just last Sunday at the car boot. I didn't get it on film or anything. The car boot was terrible. This was actually the only item I picked up from that car boot. So I'm glad that it's actually now sold and it's paid for my petrol and all the efforts of getting there. <laughs> so hopefully they stay with the customer and they're happy with them. Next up we have these Brooks Ghost 14, I think is the model. Yeah, so they're Ghost 14 model. Anything Ghost, they pretty much sell really well if they're in good clean condition, just like these ones. These look again like they've been worn just maybe a few weeks, hardly even that. There's hardly any wear on the rubber soles at all. All the uh, upper material is all nice without any rips or tears or stains or whatever like that. The midsole's nice and white and crisp. Big shout out actually to Fuzzy Feet. He picks up these shoes all the time. He usually buys them on Vinted quite cheap and all the other sort of like running shoes like Asics or Pokers or whatever sorts, whatever he can find on Vinted at a cheap price. Do check out his channel. He's got some really good cleaning tips on how to get these looking brilliant. If they're covered in mud and stuff, you can get them all shining again. I paid £15 for these at the car boot. The guy originally wanted 20. Uh, you'll see it in one of my previous videos. I actually walked away from it and then <laughs> he started like whistling me over. So I went back as you saw on camera and he was happy to accept my £15 offer. So £15 and they've sold for I think £51.99. Brand new, you're looking at what, 120 quid I think for these ones. So as these are pretty much new, worn a few times, it's not a bad price for the uh, buyer. And another top brand to look out for, these are Magnums. These are probably my favorite pair I've ever found actually. They've got the Vibram or Vibram, however you pronounce it, on the uh, sole, which it's just a good name to look out for for the rubber soles. You've also then got the Cordura fabric, the little label there, another one to look out for. They're not Gore-Tex or anything, but I'm pretty sure they're gonna be waterproof because they're all sort of leather all around and the tongue's all nicely sealed in. These are literally, I think they're new or worn once. There's hardly any damage to them at all. And I paid five pound for these at the car boot on a Wednesday morning. So they're usually a very quiet car boot. I hope for an item like this that will just pay for my morning and just cover my petrol and stuff. And that's what I found. So these have actually sold for 59.99 plus postage. Again, I think I had the 10% discount on. So I think they ended up paying about 52 quid for these, but for five pound paid, it's not bad at all. They did stick around a little bit longer than I thought. I think about two, two or three months, but they have, they've gone eventually and I've made some really good money on them. All right, guys, we've got two more orders and they're both very nice shoe orders. These are Converse Runstar Hikes. I've never actually heard of them, but they've got like a platform sole on them. Really nice, heavy tread, not like the standard Converse you get. And the sole kind of wraps around the top there. So the upper material is literally just a basic Converse, but then the bottom sole is just really beefy. I had no idea about these. I paid £10 in a charity shop. I just thought I'd go for it just because they're a little bit unusual and not the standard ones. I thought they might have a bit of value to them. Uh, got home, did some research, and they were selling for about 70 to 80 pound pre-owned on eBay. So I, I whacked them on. Mine are in nice clean condition. I think I put them on for about 80. Had a generous offer of 65. Straight away snapped that up. 10 pound into 65. I'm not going to bother sending a counter offer just because I want the money really. And it was a little bit quiet at the time on eBay, so I thought it's, it's 65 quid in the payout. It's going to help me a lot. And I paid 10 pounds, so I'm not going to try and fight that just to get an extra couple of quid from the from the buyer. And lastly, we've got this very rare pair of Dr. Martins. And if you saw in one of my earlier videos, literally about three or four months ago now, these did actually sell already to a UK buyer. Uh, they were slightly too small, I think, or, or too big, I can't remember. So he had to return them, but they sold for about 160 quid. They sat around for a further sort of three or four months. And finally, someone has sent me a hundred pound offer. So I straight away took that. I paid about 10 pound, I think, at the car boot for these ones. They're a really nice vintage, made in England like a really rich dark green color, as you can see there. You never find Dr. Martens like this anymore. I mean, usually the made in England ones you do find, but they're completely torn to shreds. I've even had like holes in the uh, levers there. But these ones, as you can see, they've been previously worn, but they're not heavily worn at all. Yeah, so 100 pound and plus postage, and they're off to America actually. So I really hope they don't get returned for like a different, the wrong size or something like that, because that'll be a bit of an inconvenience for everyone. And I'll have to try and sell them once again. But hopefully they stick and that's that. It's always a little bit of worry selling shoes. Literally just this morning, I've had an, uh, had a return opened up just for a 45 pound boots that didn't, did, again, didn't quite fit. So it's no issue for me. It's just, I've got to put aside that money in next week's payout, I guess, just to um, cover that return. But the good thing is when shoes don't fit, you can always sell them again, just like these ones. And you will eventually get a buyer that keeps them and you get to keep your money. Okay, here we go, guys. There's 12 orders all ready to go, all packed up. Just need to print labels. But about five minutes ago, we just had another order in. So this is number 13. I'll get this one out now. These are brand new sketches. I paid eight pound for these at the car boot about 
I don't know, three weeks ago, four weeks ago. Uh, eight pound, quite a lot to spend on sketches, but then again, they were brand new, so I thought there's got to be some money in it. I think I had these up for thirty-two ninety-nine, and somebody just sent me a twenty-seven pound offer, so I took that plus the three pound postage, makes it a nice thirty pound. Gets them gone, gets the money back in the bank, ready to reinvest into new stock. All right, hi guys, we are back in the garage. I've just posted all the parcels, got all that done, had lunch and everything, just chilled out for a little bit because I was getting overheated. It's so hot in here. As you can hear, I have actually got the fan on at the moment, so I'm sorry about that, but I can't actually turn it off at the moment because my floor is completely full of all the stock I got yesterday at the car boot. This is probably, I've just put a post on Instagram actually, and this is probably my biggest haul ever from one car boot. Yeah, so I've got my work cut out. This is probably going to take me a good like three or four days to properly work through and get it all cleaned up and listed and just tested, make sure everything works all right. So I'll just spin around now because the lighting's a bit better this way around. Uh, yeah, just making sure that there's no damage to any of the items or anything like that. I do try and check them over in the field, but obviously things happen. It's very early in the morning. You're half asleep when you're buying items. Sometimes the price is so good, you quickly give them the money, put the item in the bag, and before you know it, you've picked up like a broken item. <laughs> but it happens all the time. That is a huge amount of items. Like I said, I've never found this much in one big field and this is probably about two two and a half hours of searching in the morning i think i got there about 10 to 6 yesterday morning and i left about half eight not too bad at all for two and a half hours work so as you can see we've got a good mixture of items here what i'm going to do now is probably just show you one by one or maybe in a little bit of bulk of like shoes and nerf guns just what i paid i'll put them on the countertop here I'll show you what I've paid and try and show you a sold on the screen of what they've sold for. And hopefully you guys can learn a little bit from that at the same time. All right, to kick start, we've got all these Nerf guns here. We've got two rival guns. That's, uh, I think, Apollo 700, they call it. I've only got one of them, but it came with a spare mag, which is very handy because I believe I've got a blue one in stock without the mag. So I can now pair that with the blue one and pair them together. And they always sell better as a pair, usually for around 30 to 35 pound. But if I wanted to sell that singly, I'm looking at around 10 to 15 pound. So try and get a pair if you can. It then came with this rival here. I've never found this one before. Bit of a beast gun, as you can see. The shoulder mount, or whatever it's called, the bit that goes into your shoulder, folds back like so, kind of making it like a smaller gun. But this one here goes for about 30 to 35 pound on its own, which is really nice. And of course, that's got the original mag in there as well. It also came with a bucket full of ammo, so that's very handy. So obviously I can keep them for future guns. And also this rubbish Nerf gun there, which I don't think has any value to it. But I paid £10 for those three guns. And then near the end of the car boot, I found this here, which is easily my favourite Nerf gun to pick up. This is a Nerf Sledgefire from the Zombie Strike uh, editions of the guns. Unfortunately, it only comes with two of the three magazine shells. So I'll probably get a little bit less, maybe like a fiver less than I would usually get. But around about two years ago, these were fetching £45 easily and they'd fly out within about two days of listing. But the price has dipped a little bit. You're looking at more 25 to 30, possibly £35 if you've got all three shells. So a very rare gun still. And it owes me £3 from the car boot. So it was really nice to see that one again. Right, so as you guys would have seen from my sales just then, you would have seen how many shoes I sell. Uh, I get them just from the car boot sales. They're usually in this sort of condition, all covered in mud. Give them a really deep clean. It doesn't take too long. It usually takes about an hour just to clean sort of 10 pairs of shoes if I just um, go outside when the sun's cooking and just uh, give them a really hard scrub, stick them in the sun, and they usually dry within sort of an hour, hour and a half. So it's always worth doing it like that if you can. Just do it all in bulk, get it all done, make sure they're fully dry, smelling fresh, all the uh, mud and the previous use is off. And yeah, just stick them on eBay and they will, they will sell. Honestly, I don't think people want to buy brand new shoes these days. Obviously, money is very tight for everyone at the moment. And if they can buy pre-owned shoes in very nice, clean condition, then they will. So starting off, we got these Crocs here. I paid £2 for these. Crocs, I think, are coming a little bit back into fashion. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure there's more money than £2 in these after a nice cleanup. Probably 10 to 15 quid. Again, I'll try and show you some solds on the screen. We then got these Timberlands here. These are really clean condition. They almost look fake, but I don't think they are. There's the inside label right there, which I've seen before. I think they're youth size. Uh, yeah, they're size five, these ones. And I paid just three pound for these, hoping to get back 25 to 30. They might sit around a while. It's so hot outside, no one wants to be wearing clunky boots. So if they do, I'll, I'll just take them off eBay and wait till Christmas time. We've then got these pre-owned, obviously they're pre-owned like all of these shoes are, but these are quite heavily used Birkenstocks. I have actually sold Birkenstocks in worse condition than this. Uh, the leather kind of molds to people's feet, which is a bit weird that someone else wants to kind of buy that, but they do still sell pre-owned. 
and this pair only cost me two pound again hoping to get back 15 to 20 quid on those ones i'm not an expert on football boots so i wasn't too sure about this one i paid just three pound for these nikes they look pretty good and undamaged obviously they're quite muddy so they need a bit of a deep clean but the soles it's one of those things the soles could be like 40 50 quid or they could be 15 20 quid but i can't see myself going wrong at two at three pound paid we've then got these blue adidas which are practically new they look like they've been worn about once they kind of just got the dustiness on the soles but they were, they're nice and white on the side soles there the uppers don't have any damage the insoles aren't worn at all and i overpaid five pound or seven pound i can't remember the exact amount but i just thought adidas shoes nice clean condition got to be at least 20 25 pound and saving the best till last we've got these three pairs uh, we'll start with these new balance here i didn't think much of these but they they're undamaged you know there's no big holes in them or anything they will they will sell for at least 15 to 20. i paid three pound and doing some research i think this is actually the cancer research model it's like a limited edition model of these new balance shoes for some reason these fetch like 35 maybe 40 pound which is pretty crazy i could be wrong though maybe a little bit less maybe i'm not looking into them properly uh so at least 20 pound back if i was to just guesstimate it and my favorite ones to pick up are these dr martin's really clean they're sort of um girls school shoes i think they're only a size three so very small but they will definitely sell i uh, paid five pound for these ones he literally just said they don't fit his daughter anymore and it looks like she's worn them about twice <laughs> so there's hardly any work anywhere to the soles as you can see nice and shiny and clean on these top of my head right now we're probably thinking around 35 to 45 pound and lastly we've got these a6 gt 2000s do look out for GT2000 if you can find it. They then have like a a number after the GT2000, and these are number six, which I think is a bit of an earlier model, so not as valuable as the sort of nines or the elevens, but still some money in them, around 30, maybe 35 pound if they're in good condition. Once I clean them up and I haven't found any random damage or anything like that, but I did look at them well before I bought them. I paid just a fiver. You usually get a few little holes around the mesh bit here, just from people's toenails poking through after they're like, 10k run or whatever she literally said her husband wore them a few times and just stopped running so yeah they look that like they've been worn a few times there's no there's all the print it's on the insole still as you can see the tongue hasn't worn out at all like that so they're just little signs to look out for whilst you're buying shoes and next up we've got these here these are all from the same seller i saw the vhs player straight away i have been telling myself recently to avoid vhs players because i've been having a lot of bad luck recently i get them home i test them out and of course they don't work properly i paid five pound for this little bundle here she had a whole box of vhs tapes this was the only one that kind of jumped out at me nightmare before christmas uh check and solds they go for around five to six pounds so not much but I paid a fiver for the lot so that pays for my bundle this one here it's a sony i've sold this so many times she said she had the remote for it i went back like half an hour later and she still couldn't find it so yeah i wrote that one off um no remote but of course you got you got the power cable still i saw someone achieve 25 pound without the remote so i'm happy with that again it owes me like a couple of quid and this one again no remote with it i need i still need to test it it's got the power cable owes me what let's just say two pound two pound pound someone managed to get like 80 quid for this or 88 quid i don't know if that's a complete sold or if that's if they actually bought the item but it's popped up on ebay saying that but then someone else managed to get 30 quid so either way there's got, to be, there's got to be some money in it. When buying VHSs, do look out for the super drive because I think that's something to do with the fast forward and the rewind, like a speedier sort of upgrade to the standard. But yeah, they do still sell. As long as they're working all right, make sure you thoroughly test them. And they usually go straight in these boxes here. So it's not a problem box-wise either. So this here is a first for me. This is vintage Bluebird Poly Pocket. This is 1992. Do look out for the Bluebird ones. There's good money in them. I literally just paid 50p for this one. I'll show you a sold on the screen now and you can see what they sell for. Uh, unfortunately, this one is missing. It looks like the battery cover. I'm assuming there's some sort of, the steps go up to like maybe a little pathway up here, but that is missing. So, and of course it's untested. There is a bit of battery corrosion in there. So I haven't got high hopes for this one working. It's quite a cool little set though, and even spares repair. There's plenty of collectors out there. For 50p, you can't really go wrong. It will at least sell for 10 to 15 quid. And staying with the pink theme, we've got this vintage Roberts radio. Really cool, made in England, vintage. It's the Roberts Revival. So this one, I'm not sure the exact year, but it looks pretty vintage to me anyway. Um, I got it because it had the original tag on it, which is really cool. Obviously it's been used, it's not brand new or anything. But just nice to have that original swing tape. It did not come with the power cable, which is something you should really look out for when buying these. Sometimes they're just a the basic figure eight cable, but this one it's just a nine volt, quite a wide 
um, connector. But I might have one laying around somewhere, so I could probably test this one out if I wanted to. They do also take batteries in the back here. Uh, you get like a massive block of battery that goes in this. And yeah, so it can be portable. It's just a really cool radio. She had loads of them. She wanted £10 each. Thinking about it now, I probably should have snapped them all up. But I really like this one because it was the only one with the tag on it. Of course, it's pink, so that's quite a popular colour. Uh, quite nice condition, obviously untested. The aerial was nice and straight. The lever's not beaten up at all. Uh, spares repair, you're looking at sort of 20 to £25. If it's working, maybe 50 60 And I think you can buy the remakes of these. Like, and they, they're worth anything up to like... 150, 160 quid. Uh, next up, we've got these Trek items here. Uh, some of you probably know the mountain bike brand Trek or Bontrager, I think it's called. That's another that's another name for it maybe, or like a sister brand. They had this Trek hat here. Obviously you've got Shimano branding on there. Quite a cool little item. Uh, I paid 50p for this one and 50p for this one here, which says, shut up legs. And these here, so that, yeah, they were 50p each. And then these gloves were three pound from the same sellers. And they're brand new in packaging still. So probably looking back at least 20 quid on the gloves. Uh, the hat there, 15 maybe, 10 to 15 quid. Quite a cool one. And that one now I might just keep for myself. But if I was to sell it, I'll probably get about a tenner. The first buy of the day was actually these, the Crusade pans. Really nice clean condition. Not too scratched on the inside or cracked or anything like that. The only issue is there's no lids with them. But they will still sell. I haven't got an issue with that. Nice wooden handles. They're usually very burnt on the bottom, bottoms of the handles. But as you can see, these are not too bad at all. Obviously you cook it on a gas hob and the flames just come around and burn the wood. Two pound each, so bargain. Probably looking at about 15 to 20 back on the 18 and got to be over 20 quid on the number 20. Next up, we've got this Fur Real Friends Tiger. I paid just five pound for this one. I tried to get it for three quid and she wouldn't take it. Five pounds, quite a fair price though, because it comes with a little chew toy. This thing here can sell for upwards from 10 pound, maybe even 15 quid. Uh, you're looking at around 20 to 25 pound back on that one as well. I have sold this. I've sold a white one similar to this. It was like a white snow leopard. Super rare. That was last year or maybe two years ago. And that got about 70 quid. So do look out for fur reels. They're really cool if they're working properly. Obviously, you've got to be careful of the battery corrosion and stuff like that. Because people tend to leave the batteries in place on toys like this. And then it completely destroys them. Just be wary when you're picking these up. I definitely seem to be having an issue right now with buying dartboards. I, I just keep seeing them and they're in really nice clean condition so I'll just pick them up because they it's kind of like an easy sort of minimum 30 pound sale every time uh, you've got sort of this that brand there to look out for this is the diamond version nice clean condition it looks hardly used at all and I paid three pound for that one and then I paid 10 pound for this one with the foam surround as you saw in a previous video I sold the foam surround for a different board for about 20 20 quid I think it was and then I sold the board for around 35. So yeah, so the money's safe in both of these boards. I'll show you some solds on the screen now. Uh, you're looking, what? Well, it's got to be 20 to 30 pound on each of them, at least. Next up, we've got this Fur Real Chimp. Never found this one before. It does sell for around 20 to 25 pound. The guy said it's not quite working properly, but he wanted just a pound for it. So I took that risk. I'll get it all tested out. I'll see exactly what's wrong with it and just go from there. It could be worth 10 pound, could be worth 15. I don't know if anyone buys these spares repair. It's the first time finding it, so we'll see what happens. But at a pound, you can't really go wrong. Uh, also a pound was this DS charger. These sell really quickly. I mean, I might just keep this just to test other DSs with, but if, if I was to sell it, we're looking at around six to seven pound, I think, maybe a little bit more, because it's obviously the genuine one. I then gave a lady five pound for these three, these three games and this controller. Uh, I should have checked the games because those two games are completely scratched up. I haven't got a uh, disc cleaner or anything like that, so I'm not gonna bother trying to clean them. They're not worth too much, maybe 15 quid on Super Mario Bros and eight quid for that one. So what I might do with these is just put them in the car boot pile and sell them to someone else. A lot of other resellers have the disc cleaners at home and they're happy to buy scratched up discs just to clean up and make profit out of it. I also got this Resident Evil. This disc is actually really nice. I've never seen the game before, so I thought I'll try it out, see if it's worth anything. And it's not worth pennies, it's worth about five to six pounds. So a little bit of money in there. But the main item, of course, is the Motion Plus Wii Remote. Unfortunately missing the back, but I've got loads of backs for the Wii remotes and in black as well. So yeah, you're looking at around £20 back on that one just because it's got the Motion Plus inside it. I've sold quite a few of these horse vests before. These are protective vests. This one is really heavy duty. As you can see, it's just like super padded out. Paid a fiver for it. She said make me an offer. I said £5 because I don't know. She said it's really expensive in the shops, which it does feel like it is. So 
my five pound offer she snapped up straight away i probably should have offered like three quid at first but i don't when they say make an offer you don't want to sound like a bit of a cheapskate you know <laughs> you want to you want to be quite generous with your first offer at least if if you know the item's worth money uh, i've sold previous ones in this sort of condition before for around 35 to 45 pound i'll try and find some solds and put them on the screen but hopefully at least 25 to 35 pound and next up this is the last of the lot so just three items left we'll get there eventually of course there's quite a few to go through we've got this tigger baby bouncer thing i know that these are worth a little bit of money not too much but she wanted just two quid for it so i thought you know it's, it's disney it's tigger it's gonna be worth some money um probably looking back about 10 to 15 pound on that one uh we've then got a prince tennis racket nothing too special nice clean condition good brand to look out for prince it's got its original case of course uh, you're looking back around 15 to 20 on this one, I think. Just top of my head again. Sometimes they sell for really good money. Sometimes they stick around for ages and they only sell for like a tenner. You never know. And lastly, little shout out to Joe's Collector's Corner on YouTube and Instagram. Because I saw him pick this up in one of his videos. And I thought, oh, I swear I've seen that loads of times and just avoided it. Uh, yeah, it's just one of those TV ad sort of items, you know. People use them for like a day and then they just put them in the cupboard and never use them again. <laughs> uh, this one owes me just two quid. And the solds on this, you're looking at around 15, 20, maybe even 25 pound if it's got all the little adjustments in here. I need to look at it properly, but I'm not too sure. Uh, yeah, so my two pound is definitely safe in that one. So thanks again, Joe. Go and check out his YouTube as well. He's just like me doing lots of videos and stuff. So lots of car boot hunts and all that. All right then guys, that is everything. Thanks so much for watching as always. I hope you enjoyed that. Hope it wasn't too long winded for you. I just thought I'd show you my massive haul. So this is literally like one of my biggest hauls I've got at a car boot. So I thought it was, Good to get it on YouTube, show you guys what it's all about. I didn't film at the car boot yesterday because I just wasn't really feeling up to it. I wasn't in the right mood or anything. So took a little day off and it's definitely paid off anyway. Focusing on filming sometimes puts you off from picking up the items because you're, you're too invested in trying to get that good clip for YouTube where you actually forget to pick up the items just as much. So yeah, it's nice to have a little break sometimes and just go straight in just doing the job you're there to do really and pick up as much as you can. <laughs> and that's what I did. I shouldn't have to go to any midweek car boots this week. Uh, my next one will be Saturday, but as I said before, my Saturday stock usually goes straight in the loft, ready for Q4 and winter time. Hopefully sell some good stuff all throughout the winter and Christmas. Obviously, if you've been doing this a few years, you'll know how busy it gets at Christmas time. So you've really got to make hay whilst the sun shines, but then use that hay in the winter. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, thanks so much, guys, for watching. I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.